What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Profile Builder tutorial for you. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to model out and quantify different kinds of piping using the extension Profile Builder. So one thing to note is that Profile Builder is currently on sale for 50% off. So if you decide that this is something you're interested in, you want to check out this cool extension, you can do that in the link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk about how to use the extension Profile Builder in order to start modeling piping inside of SketchUp. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm assuming that you're going to want to model the profile of a pipe. And so to do that, to just model a single profile of a simple pipe, we're just going to use the profile dialog right here. And so what we can do is we need to add a profile for the pipe that we want to use. So in this situation, let's say that I have maybe a three inch diameter pipe. So I'm going to draw a radius of one and a half. And then I'm going to offset this out, maybe like, we'll call it a quarter of an inch. So what I've done is I've basically generated the profile of a pipe, right? If I was to extrude this, that's what a pipe would look like. And so what I want to do is I want to add this profile to Profile Builder. So the way that I can do that is I could select this, click the plus button with it selected, and I'm gonna name this, um, we're gonna say this is three inch pipe, like this. So now what we've done is you can see how it brings that profile in as a profile inside of Profile Builder. Well now we can click in order to add that profile inside of our model. And so in its simplest form, if you just wanted to add a pipe right here, you could just use this build tool in order to add that pipe manually, right? So I could come in here, I could click, I could make it turn the corner, and I could have it run over here, right? But that's a lot of extra work and there's an easier way to do this. And the first thing you might've noticed is the way this pipe came in, it got put in through the middle of the ceiling, which is not what we want. So what we need to do is we need to adjust the insertion point of this pipe. So right now, for example, this pipe is in here and it was inserted um, centered on the line that I drew. Well, what I want to do is I want to adjust that so that it's inserted based on a top point rather than that middle point. One cool thing about Profile Builder is I can select this profile, go down to this option right here to edit my properties and I can apply the change. Well, notice how this changed when I adjusted my insertion point. So now any pipe that I draw is gonna be drawn based on that top point. So you can see how now if I draw another pipe in here like this, it's centered on that point. But the problem with this is our pipe really needs to be spaced off of the ceiling a little bit, right? It's not gonna be like that flush. There's gonna be a little bit of a gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select this and I'm gonna adjust the Y offset by negative one inches. So I'm just going to adjust this by negative one, hit tab, then I'm gonna click on the button to edit my properties and click on apply. Well, notice how what that did is that moved that insertion point an inch off of my pipe. So now everything I bring in is gonna be spaced an inch from the roof. So now bringing in pipes is really easy, right? Once you get your spacing right and all of that. One thing you might wanna do, by the way, is you might wanna save this to a library. So if you're creating a lot of pipes, you can save these just by clicking on the save button and then finding a folder. So I have a folder specifically for pipe profiles. So for this one, for example, I would just name this three underscore pipe and click on save. And you can get as specific as you want with your naming. But you might have noticed drawing this around the corner was kind of a pain, right? What I want to do instead is I just want to draw a path like this one. So I'm going to draw a path that extends maybe, we'll call it 24 inches into the next corridor and then turns the corner. So I want to model a path like that. Well, now I can just select that path like this. And there's a button in here that'll extrude or build this pipe along that path. So I can use a path in order to generate all those pipes. So the cool thing about this is now I can just come in here and I can just offset this out multiple times in order to create more pipes. 
So I've got these selected. I'm just gonna use the offset tool and I'm gonna offset this out. We'll call it maybe, we'll call it 12 inches. And then I'll do the same thing again. I'll do the same thing again. So what that's done is that's given me multiple paths, right? Well now, the, this extension allows you to extrude along multiple paths. So if I do a shift double click and select all of these, and then I click on the button right here for build along path, that's actually going to add the pipes based on my path location. So you can see how by drawing multiple different paths, I can add these pipes in here really quickly. And so let's say, for example, that you had another pipe that you wanted to bring across this corridor. Like it needed to run from here to here, and then it needs to run this way. Well, you could come in here and you could create this, but it becomes a little bit of a problem, right? Because if I run this, my pipe is going to run into the other pipes. And we don't want that. We need our pipe to go around the other pipes. So what we can do is there's a tool in here to adjust the profile of an object you've already drawn. So to do that, I can double click and there's a tool over here called edit the path of the active profile member or assembly. What that does is that lets you come in here and redraw over the top of this, the revised path that you want. So I can draw that in and then I'm gonna erase out the edge that was here right here. Well now, if I right click, or sometimes you just need to click out of that, you can see how that's going to adjust your pipe in here based on where your revised path went. <coughs> so you can use this to make changes to paths really quickly. And so let's say that you wanted to Let's say that you wanted to create something with a little bit more detail, right? Like let's say you wanted to create a path that actually had a hanger or a pipe that actually had a hanger. Well, we can do that too. So the way that you do that is you use an assembly because if you remember an assembly allows you to extrude something along a length and then also add components based on spacing. So let's say we wanted a pipe hanger model. So I'm gonna go to the 3D warehouse. If you search for pipe hanger, there's this uh, clevis hanger pipe right here. I'm gonna go ahead and download that into my model. I'm gonna click on yes. I'm just gonna drop this right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as well. But now what I need to do is I need to add a pipe profile in here and create an assembly. So for this one, for example, I'm gonna draw a circle right here. And this really feels like more of a two inch. So I'm just gonna draw a two inch profile I'm gonna offset it out just a bit to create my pipe. And then I'm gonna add this profile into the profile section. So I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna click plus. We're gonna call this two inch pipe, like this. So we're gonna go ahead and for this one, I'm gonna set my top insertion point to a top middle right here, but then I'm gonna set my offset to the length between this point and this one right here, right? So this is 10 and 7 eighths. So what I want is I want this to have a negative 10 and 7 eighths length. So you can see how now that insertion point is a lot higher, right? So if I was to draw this, you can see how this is gonna hang off of my roof. And really you wanna set this whatever the length of your pipe hanger is going to be. And so we've got that profile in here now. And I usually like to drop one in here just because I'm gonna sample it a little bit later. And I'm just going to open the assembly dialog. What this does is this allows me to create an assembly. So I'm gonna click on the plus button right here. And it's going to ask me to add this assembly. So the first thing I wanna add is the profile member. That's gonna be your pipe. That's the thing that extrudes along the length, right? So now if I was to run this, You can see how I just get a pipe. What I wanna do is I wanna also come in here and add components. So I'm gonna click on the plus button right here and I'm gonna select a component. In this case, I'm gonna select this one right here. So now if I was to, let's just draw a new one. If I was to draw a longer version of this, 
you can see how it's adding my hangers in here. But the problem is their location is wrong and their spacing is wrong. So their rotation is wrong and also their up, down, and left, right is wrong. So we just need to make some adjustments. First thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust this by 90 degrees right here. And I'm just going to update this assembly every time I make a change so you can see what happened. You can see how that adjusted right there. Well now what I need to do is I need to adjust these pipe hangers so that they're level. So to do that I'm just going to figure out what the, uh, what the gap is between the bottom and the bottom. So you can see how this is off by one foot, three and five sixteenths of an inch. So what we need to do is we need to adjust the up down offset to negative one foot, three, five sixteenths inches. So I'm gonna tab out of here. Then I'm just gonna apply those changes. So now our height is right, we need to adjust our left right. And so our left right is off by two and three sixteenths of an inch. So I'm gonna adjust my left right offset to two and three sixteenths of an inch. Like this. And then I'll just apply this. And you can see how you can just kind of make some adjustments as you go. So maybe like two and a half might be a little bit better. I'm good with that right there. So you can see how now our hanger is in the proper location for our pipe. And so quick side note, you can see how this is a little bit early on this one. We want to set a start setback of like negative one inch or positive one inch. That way our hanger starts where our pipe is, maybe two inches like this. So now what this does is this adds a new pipe hanger every eight feet. So let's say we wanted this to add a new pipe hanger every four feet. We could type in a value of four feet and then adjust this. So now what this is going to do is this is going to add a pipe with a new hanger every four feet. Well, the cool thing about this is this works the same way that the profiles do. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save my model. I'm also going to save my assembly. So I'm going to call this a two inch pipe with hangers. So I'm going to save this. That way I can get back to it if I need to. But I'm just going to draw a path like this. And we'll say this will run to here and then it'll turn the corner like this. So now I can just select the path and do what I did before with the profiles, but now we're going to do it with the assembly. So I'm just going to click on this button right here to build a long path. And you can see how what that's done is that's come in here and that's actually created your pipe with the hangers in this corridor. So you can use this to accurately simulate pretty much where those hangers are going to go. Your corners might get a little bit weird, but in general you get a pretty good idea of how many hangers you're going to need. Well, the cool thing about all of this is you can then use all of this in the Mindsight Studios quantifier product. So um, if you decide that you want the quantifier product, that actually gets sold as a part of a bundle right here where you can get Profile Builder 3 with Quantifier to save some money. But when you couple those together, you can start getting quantities and applying costs to your models. So for example, I'm gonna take this assembly and I'm gonna run a report. So when I click on this, it's gonna open the Quantifier dialog. And if I click on this right now, what this is gonna do is this is gonna give me the option to create a report. Well, the report is gonna show me that this object has 132 lineal feet of my pipe and it also has 35 of my pipe hangers. So you can get a count of your pipe hangers in here as well. And so you could also do this with these other pipes. So if you just wanted like lineal footage, you could do that as well. So notice how if I select these like this, it'll report out whatever I select. So if I run a report now, it's going to give me a report showing me the overall length of my different pipes as well as my count of my hangers. So you can use this to generate like a bill of materials or something like that. You could also apply costs. So to apply the costs, what you would do is I would put my pipes on a layer, 
right? So for this one, for example, these are gonna be my three inch pipes and this is gonna be my two inch pipe. So what I would do is I would create a layer for two inch pipes and I would create a layer for three inch pipes or I guess they're tags now. So I'm gonna select all of these. I'm gonna put them on the three inch pipes layer. Right, for this one, I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna select my pipe and I'm gonna put that on the two inch pipes layer, like this. And then all of my hangers, I'm gonna select all of those, I'm gonna deselect my pipe and I'm gonna put those on a hangers tag. So I'll put those on my hangers. Well now I can apply a cost to each one of those layers. So if I select all of these, and this one probably needs to go, nope, we're good. So if I select all of these, I can go into my layers option, and I can actually apply a cost to every object on each one of the layers. So for two inch pipes, for example, let's say those, we're gonna have a cost of $2.50 a linear foot. I can click on OK, and that's gonna add a cost to everything on that layer of 250 a lineal foot. So for my three inch pipes, let's say it was gonna be $3 a lineal foot. And so then for the hangers, I would go in and select one of them, and under object, I would add a cost per each for that object. So I'm gonna click plus, and let's say those are gonna run 350 a piece. I'm gonna click on okay. So notice how if I click the refresh button, this is giving me costs for each object. If I select multiple objects, you can see how this gives me costs for all of them. Well, you could take all of this and you can actually, by selecting them all, create a cost estimate. So I'm just gonna select all of these, deselect my building, and then if I was to run a cost detail report right here, that would actually create a cost estimate based on everything that you've placed in here. So you could use this tool once you get your system set up right to actually estimate costs as well as materials inside of SketchUp. So if you're interested in Profile Builder, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Like I said, it is currently on sale. So this could be a good time to pick that up and start playing around with it. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Did you find it helpful? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.